One of the things I frequently um, ask folks, what do they want? Um, and the answer, uh, whether I'm talking to a group of leaders or teams or even in family situations or a church or neighborhood situations, when I ask people, what do they want? What do they want from that other person? The answer is consistently around the topic of honesty. I want them to be honest with me. And see, so people say that. Even, even managers, I want, I want the honest truth. You know, give me the truth. And, and what they're saying is they want somebody to tell them what's inside, right? The truth. Um, I, want you to, I want you to tell me when you don't agree with me. I want you to tell me when you have a different idea. I want you to tell me when you've made a mistake. And so I get that, right? We want people to be honest, and sometimes that's very elusive. And the, the key to understanding that whole concept of getting that honesty is, number one, what do we do to create the opportunity for somebody to feel like they could be honest? And number two, what do we do to continue that honesty? And, and it reminds me of this little thing that I do with my, with my grandkids. So I think I probably started it when I would go out and take hikes with family. I would pick up little rocks and put them in my pocket and go back. And, and, and I've got this little rock pile back at the house, and I've got all these rocks from all over the place. And when I started getting grandkids, I started taking them on this little adventure, right? And so um, whether I'm talking about my oldest uh, grandson, Banyan, or Miles, Jesse, or the youngest, Carson, and even with some of the girls, I'll do this. But Jesse right now is in that spot where he really loves rocks. So we'll go out in Colorado and we'll be walking on a trail and I'll point out little rocks and then show them where their pockets are. And those kids will put the rocks in their pockets. And Jesse's notorious for stopping for almost every rock. He wants to get the big rocks, too. And his pockets are bulging. And, and Jesse's starting to get sticks now, too. And that's just a whole new thing. I mean, I think that's cool. But, but here's what I learned as a grandparent that I didn't understand as a parent, is when a kid gives you their rock, they're giving you their material goods. They're giving you the only thing that they have. And so that says we should appreciate it. As a parent, I didn't really understand that, right? We're walking along and the kid's picking up rocks. I'm saying, put the stupid rock down, son, let's go, we gotta hike. Now I understand. Now, pick the rock up, save the rock. Here, pop up, here's the rock. Now I value it. I want them to know that I value that gift. Honesty is the same way. When somebody is honest with you, they're giving you their gift. They're giving you all they've got. And if when they're honest and they say, I don't agree, or I made a mistake, if the way we respond is to attack them for being honest, the likelihood that they'll be honest again in the future is low. So from a leadership perspective, we have to create a climate that encourages people to be honest. So when people say, Mark, I want people to be honest, I ask them, are they? And if they're not, what kind of a climate are you making it easy for people to be honest with you? And so I've got this little thing that I've kind of learned and I talk about it. I, says, I want to make it, it easy to say no and harder to say yes. I want to make it easy for people to be honest. And if the answer is no, tell me no. Because a true no is better than a false yes. So what I want is to create an example, a situation, a circumstance where people can be honest. And that's just one technique that you can use. But what you want is honesty. And you've got to create the situation for that to happen. And then if people are honest and you don't agree or don't understand what they're saying, then that's where we inquire. That's when we ask questions. That's where we find out. Because obviously their perspective is different than yours. It doesn't mean they're right. It doesn't mean you're right. It means there's a difference. So now, from a leadership perspective, when we hear something that burns our ears, now we've got to go back and say, tell me more about that. Tell me why you think that. Tell me why you think we should change. And what we're listening for, what we're looking for, what we're searching in that relationship is where are we the same? Where are we common? And from that point of commonplace, we can work out most of our conflicts. The principle is all conflict resolution begins and ends at a commonplace. But if we don't take time to allow that to surface, those differences, and if we don't take time to find that commonplace, it's not likely that we'll get to the place where we're both working together in alignment the way we should. That's leadership.